too. Leaving San Diego. <laughs> Finally did it. Yep. <laughs> so yes. Finally did it. San Diego boat traffic. Pretty intimidating. Yeah, <laughs> this was something that I've been wanting to do since summer. That was when I targeted to take my sailboat out. But unfortunately, I ran into some trouble with my transmission and had to get that rebuilt. Mm. You're going to be to that uh, sailboat. Completely under sail. Wow. Leaving San Diego. 16.6 knots. Woohoo! What's our speed? Five knots. Five knots. Five knots under sail. Leaving the point. Oceanside bound is our first stop. So when we passed the point, we had some fantastic wind. And so we thought, let's just keep sailing up the coast. Instead of making the trek all the way to Catalina, we would just stop at Oceanside. And many of the sailing channels always say that there's a lot of downtime when you're making a crossing. And boy, there was a lot of downtime. I mean, we kind of did a lot of talking. Uh, I should have brought a book. But I did end up doing some work that I had to do. Six hours and 20 minutes of sailing, and we are just passing La Jolla Shores. So a little bit of a, a shocker, but uh, we're now motoring. But the journey is the one matter. It's all about the journey. So far, so good. Five more hours to get to Oceanside. Yeah, uh, that's very optimistic. Yeah, actually. maybe six. Six hours to get to Oceanside from Still here. Still optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's drinking, right? <laughs> Almost sunset. I think we're gonna see the green flash tonight. We're gonna record it. The green flash is coming. Almost going down. Well, we're in Oceanside. 14 hours later. <laughs> we should have motored the entire way. We are docked somewhere. Maybe it's illegal, maybe it's not. We don't know. It's we, 1230, 12.30 a.m. We left at 11. 11, so. Okay, so almost 12 hours. So lesson learned, you cannot sail alone to Catalina. You have to motor. <laughs> Four more hours. Three hours and 30 minutes. Woohoo! 3.30. All right, three more hours left. We're almost there. It's a rough life. It's beautiful. Rough life. It's beautiful. Island is within vision, you can see it. Looking forward to it. Once we got to the island, we needed to get off and have a beer. Feeling a little woozy today. Just gonna have to drink more instead of diving. We'll do diving tomorrow. Diving in Catalina is always a treat. Visibility, when we were on the sailboat looking down, we thought, man, the visibility is going to be so awesome. But when we started our dive, we were kind of disappointed on how hazy it was. But don't get me wrong. It was still a lot of fun to do our dive. We saw a bunch of eel. We saw a ton of um, sheephead a ton of Garibaldi, but we didn't see the giant sea bass. That was what we were trying to find, but no giant sea bass in sight. But again, still lots of fun. 
the temperature at depth, and I think the deepest we went on our second dive was 100 feet, the, the temperature was 61. So it is definitely a lot warmer to dive Catalina than it is at La Jolla Shores. And uh, I don't get why that is, but I, again, I've never had a bad dive in Catalina. I better knock on some wood when I say that. It's always great to just kind of journey through the kelp forest and uh, come back out at the top, close to the staircase. So when we did our dives, we did it on a Saturday. We could have done it on a Friday because there was definitely nobody out on Friday. It was like a ghost town. But we were feeling a little woozy because we kind of had uh, too many celebration beers for making the trek. So we kind of chilled on Friday. I had to work as well. But uh, got there on Saturday and there were a ton of other divers, a lot of classes. So we stayed away from the classes and just kind of did our own thing. And of course, like always, uh, Catalina didn't disappoint. There was a ton of marine life everywhere and I just love diving Catalina. Any chance I get, I'm, I'm gonna dive. And I'm probably gonna make this trip again during Christmas break, but this time it's gonna be with my two daughters. did dive the day after Halloween and it's a bummer that someone dropped this and left it here thinking that it was cool but I still videotaped it any anyways um, don't litter in in a marine preserve because it's just not the right thing to do but I, I get it it was Halloween So the second dive, we try to stay as deep as possible for as long as possible, just kind of on the outskirt of where the kelp forest starts. And so there was definitely a lot of schooling fish and a couple of patches of kelp here and there. Um, the second dive, I let Pedro lead, and so you're going to see a lot of footage of him in the front of me. another female sheephead. Just beautiful. Like I stated before, if you're in Southern California, I highly encourage you to make a trip to Catalina. Fantastic diving there. I mean, we have fantastic diving in San Diego as well, and other kelp forests are thriving. But for some weird reason, I don't know why it is, the water's ever so slightly warmer in Catalina and ever so slightly more clear. Gotta go to Catalina. Back to San Diego. Back to San Diego from Catalina. We had a great time. Early morning. And we had a really interesting lessons learned this morning with compasses and magnets. <laughs> they really do throw things off. <laughs> compass wasn't working. We, we were, could. We, we were could. heading 150 degrees and the compass was reading 270. We couldn't figure it out. And then Pedro asked the magic question. Did we put something next to the compass? Any magnets, anything. Lo and behold, what was there? <laughs> shaving, sh the casing of my shaving machine actually closes with magnets. And it was very close to the to the compass. Yeah, that threw everything off. <laughs> I'm glad we figured it out though. That would have sucked to have to sail manually like the Vikings. <laughs> uh, We're abandoning the dinghy. We can't get it. Too choppy. 
Bye, little guy. You were great for a day or two. Let me clarify. The rope that was towing the dinghy broke, here. and so we made every effort to try to retrieve the dinghy, but the swell was so huge and so choppy, we were afraid we were gonna too. fall in. So we had to abort. And amazingly enough, the next day a cargo carrier called me and said they retrieved the dinghy. What's up, Captain? We're heading the right direction. Heading back home. No land in sight. Five point seven knots per hour. Killing it. Which is a good yeah. Alright, so it's close to sunset. We're just getting ready to have our beautiful grilled steak dinner. Oh my god, it looks great! That's La Jolla, 10 nautical miles from La Jolla. We've got four hours to go to Point Loma. Thank you. 